So far away, Lucas. Who's the subject of today's Wiki Weekends? Uh, he's a big blue fairy man, I guess. Yeah, let's do this. Wait, wait where's my phone? Oh, fuck, it's there. There we go. Sorry, Lucas. You know the drill by now. Who are we talking about specifically? And where can people at home find the wiki we're reading from? So, we are talking about Henry Hank McCoy from Earth 616, also known as Beast. Yes, and as mentioned, you can find a link to the wiki we're reading from below. But without further ado, Dr. Henry Philip Hank McCoy. Put some fucking respect on Beast. He's got a doctorate. Current alias, Beast. And then aliases, pads and pencils at the ready for your band names at home. Agile Avenger. Blue, the Golden Arm Boy, Hanko, the Creature, the Magilla Gorilla, Mutant 666, the Monkey Man, Dr. M, Tabby, Beastie Boy, Tanar McCoy. And then relatives, just, you know, his mum and his dad, and then some unnamed cousins. And then we have Hank McCoy, his clone. Uh, and then his affiliations is the X-Force, the X-Men, and everybody they've ever worked with. And his base of operations is Krakoa in the Pacific Ocean. And his status, living status, is alive, identity, public. And that's what I like about Beast. Mm. Is that he's like, uh, in all the comics and the live action stuff, he's like an advocate for mutant rights. And he walks around as the weird blue gorilla man wearing a suit. Marital status, single. So ladies, like, um, if you've got a hankering for that Hank McCoy D, it's right there. And then occupation, adventurer, former vice principal, sword agent, biochemist, science and math instructor, mutant activist, college lecturer, researcher, professional wrestler. Who the fuck is going to challenge Beast to a wrestling match? There we go. And we've got here um, education, six PhDs. Eyes blue, hair blue, formerly brown, unusual features covered with blue fur. Unusually large hands and feet, shoe size 20. Oh. I bet as well, even if he said that, you still get that one weird dude online and go, my feet are bigger. And uh, that reminds me of a story my girlfriend told me that she was like on Reddit or something. She said, one of the saddest, like most small dick energy things I've read is uh, just this post from a girl about how her boyfriend always said he had size 13 feet and he stuffed his shoes with newspaper to pretend he had size 13 feet. Oh, no. It's like, what a fucking <laughs> loser. And he did that to his girlfriend, who presumably had already seen his penis. Anyway, we'll move on to a quote from Beast. And do you know what the most famous quote from Beast is? No idea. They say it in the movies, Oh, my stars and garters. Because they get fucking Kelsey Grammer to say that. Oh, my stars and garters. We don't want to cover his history because that's like 50 years worth of comics, but we do have personality. And I'd like to know more about the personality of a giant gorilla beast man with six PhDs. Would you, Lucas? Hell yeah. Henry McCoy often wondered why he wasn't one of the, and I quote, lucky ones if he had to remain a mutant. Why did he have a power that made him look and sometimes feel like a beast? He continued to struggle for the acceptance of others. As a man of the arts and letters and sciences, Beast was very much the Renaissance man, and while his peers in the intelligence community knew this, they still considered him very much a mutant. And that's one of the things that I oh, it's so gutting for Beast, that he is like this refined man of the arts and science. What you look at him is like he's a fucking weird gorilla dude. And one of the things that I like about Beast is that um, he embraced his powers from a very early age and used it to become like a high school football star, because his superpowers are basically just giant fucking muscles <laughs> so he just kicks the shit out of everyone and can you imagine now trying to tackle beast in a football match can you imagine being tackled by beast in a football match um, besides his brutish exterior beast was the most literate and eloquent of the x-men possessing and i quote a million dollar vocabulary henry was every bit a human being plagued by duality man slash beast genius slash sports star gentle giant slash feral aggressor equal parts biochemist and activist why is beast so fucking interesting what a cool fucking character beast focused on the x-men's goals of building a better relationship between man and mutant in immersing himself in this campaign beast held hope that the world he and the other x-men dream of he'll finally be no more uh, for the genius within than for the creature outside oh beast no I feel so bad for him. He's a fucking fictional gorilla man. I'm like, oh man, Beast, what's up? 
Yeah, and it's just like, oh, I just want to not be known for being blue and furry. I just want to be known as like a smart man with six doctorates. Like, speaking of which, uh, we have his Marvel power grid here, which is a ranking system of one to seven, with seven being omnipotent in a specific regard, and one being an average, uh, the same as an average human. So we have here, intelligence is a five, strength a four, speed a three, durability a four, energy projection a one, and fighting skills a four. So pretty powerful as heroes go. And then we have here, powers, beast is a mutant, no shit. It is possible that beast mutation is a result of genetic atavism, or genetic traits that resurface in a species after many generations of dormancy. He also possesses neotenus, or traits in a descendant that resemble those of an ancestor organism. Characteristics which would explain why he has a big modern brain with an ape-like physique. That's kind of neat actually. Um, due to a secondary mutation, Beast transforms from his original ape-like physique, which is awesome, into a more cat-like physique, which sucks ass, and they immediately retcon after everyone bitched about it. As they should have done. It just, it looks so fucking bad. Hmm. When he's like the weird cat man. It's like the X-Men anime where they use that design, and it looks fucking awful in every scene he's in. And in addition to just looking bad, it's completely at odds with the characterization we just discussed. Where, like, when he looks like a cat, like, cats are, you know, relatively more refined, I guess, than just this feral beast man. So his powers are varied at times due to ongoing and subsequent mutations, aka writers changing what he can do. So they include, but are not limited to, superhuman strength. In his teen years, Beast was able to lift and press one ton. He always made full use of his physical prowess by combining muscular strength with agile kinetic buildup. After his mutation into a blue simian form, which eventually stabilized, his strength was increased to the point he can now lift about 10 tons. Sufficient for him to smash through a brick wall with a single punch, uh, toss a small car, or tie an iron barbell into a knot. Yeah, I wouldn't particularly fancy stepping into the wrestling ring with that man. Like, what a fucking entrance that is, taking an iron barbell and tying it into a fucking knot. You are not going to stay. Like, you see that and I give up. Yeah. He wins. Just tap out instantly, you're not going to win. His strength also extends to the muscles in his legs, allowing him to leap 30 feet into the air. Oh, that's a fucking big boy. Beast can run and move at speeds that are slightly beyond the natural physical limits of a finest human athlete. Despite his abnormal size, he can run at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour, um, especially if he runs on all fours. Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, God, what's that movie with... Uh, oh, God, James McAvoy in it? Uh, there's an M. Night Shyamalan one where he plays like a guy with multiple personalities, and one of them is called, oh, oddly enough, Split. The Beast. Split, yeah, he plays... It's The Beast. And when that personality takes him over, he runs on all fours, and it looks fucking terrifying. Just this giant muscular man running on all fours, like, I'm gonna get you. Huh. Superhuman stamina. Beast's highly advanced musculature produces fewer fatigue, toxins, or physical activity than that of an ordinary human. He can exert himself at peak capacity for several hours. He has also commented that after his mutation into a cat-like form, that he no longer needs a full night's sleep. It is unknown if he retains this effect after once again regaining his ape form. It should have been when he transformed to his cat form, he slept more. So superhuman durability. Beast's bodily tissues are harder and more resistant to certain types of injuries than the bodies of a normal human. His physiology can withstand great impact forces so they can be injured by many types of conventional weaponry, such as firearms and bladed weapons. However, he can withstand massive physical impacts, such as falling from several stories and landing on his feet without suffering any broken bones or, spain, or sprains. But yeah, he can leap like 30 foot into the air. Of course, he can survive a drop from that height. He is also able to be physically struck by many superhumanly strong beings like Colossus and the Hulk uh, that would severely injure or kill a normal human with little to no discomfort. If you can take a punch from the Hulk, your durability is just like infinite. Superhuman agility. Beast agility, balance and bodily coordination are enhanced to levels that are beyond the natural physical limits of the finest human athlete. While in his simian form, he can perform the agility... <laughs> Lucas, no. While in his simian form, he has the agility of a great ape, combined with the acrobatic prowess of an Olympic-level gymnast. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see gorillas doing fucking gymnastic routines. Oh, superhuman reflexes. Beast reflexes are beyond that of the finest human athlete. His training with the X-Men, as well as his decades of experience battling enemies, has granted him the reaction time to evade gunfire. Um, he can even catch small missiles in midair with his feet. That is a fucking flex, isn't it? That is, <laughs> You shoot a missile launcher at Beast and he catches it with his feet and then just does like 18 backflips and kicks it back. 
Superhuman dexterity, he can perform many tasks with his feet as easily as a human could do with their hands. His manual and peel dexterity are so great that he can write using both hands at once, or tie knots in ropes with his toes. Presumably as well, given his strength level, he can tie a barbell in a knot with his feet. Uh, regenerative healing factor. Uh, Beast possesses a minor healing factor, allowing him to recover from injuries much faster. For instance, he can recover from minor ailments such as a severe cold or a fever in a few hours. More severe injuries like broken bones heal within a few days. Temperature resistance, due to a combination of his healing abilities and his fine coat of blue fur, Beast is resistant <laughs> to freezing temperatures. I need to know what Beast feels like. Does, is he like, does he have coarse fur or is it very soft? I imagine Beast being like a man of culture, and the arts and great refinement, he uses really expensive shampoo. Like, he must smell amazing. Telepathic resistance. Hank possesses moderate resistance to telepathic manipulation, was able to resist Cassandra Nova's high level telepathic powers for a short time until she used his own fears of devolving into a mindless animal against him. And that, presumably, is going to get covered in a moment, because I fucking love that. And then slowed aging. He possesses a slight degree of slowed aging due to his healing abilities. So despite being 40 years of age, he still retains the physical appearance and vitality of an ape man in his prime. Superhuman senses. Hank possesses enhanced acute senses comparable to those of certain animals and able to see or hear distant objects more clearly than any human and identify or track someone purely by scent over open terrain. His hands and feet are sensitive enough to detect electronic signals from bombs and listening devices through solid walls and floors. He can also see in near total darkness and was able to identify Colossus by scent alone. And Colossus is made of metal. Yeah. So like, what the fuck does Col I wonder as well if Colossus smells nice. Or do you think he just smells like motor oil? Like, oh, do you know God. when like, like bodybuilders oil themselves up? Does he do that with motor oil? Maybe. Like, do WD, WD-40. Just like, ah, oh, yeah, you're, like, you're in the X-Men like shower room. And you got Beast like pampering himself and just Colossus comes in just WD-40 is his ass crack. So, minor pheromone manipulation. Beast has the ability to secrete pheromones to attract members of the opposite sex. Not letting ease to, because look at him. Look at this fucking man behind us and tell us you're not interested, folks at home. Razor sharp claws and fangs. Beast sports retractable three inch razor sharp claws at the tip of each finger and toe. Their natural edges, coupled with his strength, are sufficient to rend most conventional materials, including wood, stone, metal, and flesh. It says here, magic. Taking Stephen Strange's advice, Hank decided to delve into magic and many of its practices. Dabbling in the mystic arts has granted Beast with a new odd Beast form, one of which can channel an immense amounts of magical power. <sighs> Why? What is so much more interesting when he's just a scientist gorilla? And then abilities include genius intelligence. Dr. Hank McCoy is one of the eight smartest people in the world. Mm. So straight up, one of the eight smartest people. He's up there like fucking Dr. Doom and Reed Richards. Among his many technological feats, McCoy designed and built Cerebro, a time travel device, a machine which separates evolutionaries from cosmic rays, and the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, outfitted with Shi'ar technology, as well as th a thermonuclear reactor. Oh my god. So you built a fucking time machine. Time traveling gorillas, let's go. He is also quite the gifted computer scientist, hacking into Bruce Banner's computer and reading his emails. Uh, he doesn't say that, but I'd like to imagine that he did. <laughs> Cecilia Reyes um, was impressed with his knowledge of theoretical physics and basic anatomy, though he has humbly stated himself to be an amateur in physics and technology. That's what you need. Like, he's humble about it. You know, mm -hmm. it's all the, he's designed a time machine. I'm just an amateur. You made a time machine beast. Yeah, you know, you know I just dabbled. I threw it together on the weekend. Like, you know, someone else helped. No, they carried the screwdriver and you built the time machine. Fuck you, take credit for it. <laughs> he's also an accomplished keyboard musician. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes, where's that? Where's that comic book? Where's that live action movie? Oh, I now I'm just imagining Beast playing guitar with a fucking pop collar and some sunglasses on. So excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant. The hyperactive bouncing Beast is an excellent hand-to-hand -hand fighter. He gains his initial combat training from Professor X. Really? He learned to fight from a guy in a wheelchair. Then again, we do know from that one X-Men game where you can play as Professor X that you can do wheelchair combos. He has received additional tutelage in combat gymnastics from Captain America. That That's more a, like it. Yeah, and then he is tip, he typically uses a freestyle form of combat, similar to that of Spider-Man, that allows him to make full use of his great strength and agility. During times of anger, however, the beast is known to resort to brawling and street fighting tactics. And this is one of the things I fucking love about Beast, where he has that Wolverine thing of he can tap into his like raw animal instincts and he hates mm. doing it. 
because he hates having to rely on that primal side of himself. I like that it says street fighting tactics, which makes me think that Beast fights dirty when he needs to. But mate, he's got fucking retractable claws that can rip your balls off. <laughs> are you like are you telling me that like Beast would not immediately go for the balls? And then weaknesses, animal instincts, aka you done fucked up now. So for years, Hank McCoy has had to come to terms with the increasing animal instincts which come with each new mutation. Cassandra Nova took advantage of this by making him act like an animal, much to his humiliation. Due to Beast's transformation to a cat-like being, he's developed a carnivorous taste for flesh. Fuck off! Oh, Beast should have been fucking eating people! Allergy, Beast claims to be allergic to sawdust. I can't wait till Sawdust Man fights the X-Men. And then Lucas, would you like to end on notes and trivia? Hell yeah. Okay, so it was revealed that Hank had a crush on Betsy Braddock when she was a supermodel. They flirted with one another. The thing is as well, can you imagine just like you're hitting on a girl and then Beast walks in in a tuxedo and you're like, oh, I'm like, how do I compete with that? How do I compete with this tuxedo wearing blue ape man with six PhDs? Han standing his way in, bending barbells with his legs. It's fucking incredible. Uh, the Beast has a weakness for Twinkies. Evidence can be found in his New Year's resolutions. Revealed that one of them was to eat fewer Twinkies. The other resolutions were to read more 15th century texts and cure the legacy virus. <laughs> so he put eating fewer Twinkies all there with cure a virus ravaging mankind. <laughs> Beast. Hey man, we've all got our weaknesses, we've, Carl. We've all got our we mine's kebabish wedges. Beast does not have blue skin, what? But a fine coat of blue fur. If Beast loses his higher mental functions and reverts to an animalistic state, he can be brought back. No. Back by a ball of yarn. <laughs> a synthetic fiber laced with pheromones, aerosol, smart drugs, and a light sequences to bring back his higher brain. So he. No, that's so, so fucking stupid. I kind of like his cat form now. That when he reverts, like, no, throw the ball of yarn. Give him the ball of yarn, it's fine. Henry McCoy claims that he does not like being called the beast and that it brings him, and I quote, great sorrow. Aww. He considers it to be an unwarranted um, moniker since he's a scholarly and refined man. He admits to having been called many unflattering things before, but that that bruised his ego. And yet, it's the only thing he's known by. Hank identified himself as agnostic. Despite this, he has prayed to God on occasion and affirmed this belief. He ultimately expressed a strong belief in God's existence during a conversation with Spider-Man, who during the conversation had declared his atheistic beliefs. Oh yeah, Spider-Man. Spider-Man go for that edgelord Reddit face. Beast has at least 1143 websites devoted to him. Hell yes. <laughs> Does Beast... Are, are most of them just like, I found the Bigfoot? <laughs> How many times do you think he gets mistaken for Bigfoot? Oh, it's like that story of Joe and they were filming uh, one of the Star Wars movies. Joe wanted to go to Endor with the, the, the Ewoks. Uh, I forget the actor playing. Uh, Peter Mayhew, when he was in Chewbacca outfit, had to be followed around um, by people in orange coats um, because hunters kept mistaking him for Bigfoot and trying to shoot him. <laughs> Beast has been a MacArthur Fellows Program recipient, a Nobel Prize winner, and nine-time recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Oh my god. I hope he wears those nine medals as he walks into bars. He's like, fucking what? Six PhDs, nine Presidential Medals of Freedom, fine coat of blue fur, and a cup of chamomile tea. Who fucking wants some? <laughs>